If you uh, check out one of my many email addresses, screen names, and I can't even tell you which one it is. Most of them don't have any profile attached to them or any information about me. Mostly because I don't need instant messages from people in Nigeria begging for a plane ticket. So I generally don't tell you anything about me. Anything you need to know about me, you can find out right here on the radio. But one of them, and I'm going to guess it's MSN, was very insistent that I set up, uh, like, their failing version of MySpace. Have you ever seen MSN attempting to do MySpace? I mean, uh, Microsoft missed out on MySpace. They didn't understand it. They didn't get it. They didn't do it. And then they tried to come late to the party, as Microsoft does with software and a lot of other things. Which is not to say I don't love Microsoft, the company I do. But innovation is not something Microsoft does. Bill Gates loves to talk about innovation. Bill Gates uh, knows nothing about innovation. What Microsoft does is they see a little idea that somebody has, like an Internet browser, uh, then they try to copy it badly. They release it to the public full of bugs and security problems. And eventually, because of Microsoft's heft, eventually they put a company like Netscape out of business, and they've got the only browser that most people care about. Yeah, Firefox, my ass, okay? The bottom line is that the vast majority of people who have PCs use a Microsoft browser, and that's that. And the same thing is happening with MSN and MySpace, okay? Uh, Microsoft missed out on MySpace. And uh, for years, I have occasionally used the MSN Messenger program because I know a couple of uh, weirdos in other countries who, you know, that's what they use to communicate online. Requiring to log on under like four screen names anytime I want to send instant messages. Because everybody, you know, one person uses Yahoo, one person uses Google Talk, one person uses MSN, blah, blah. So anyway, uh, one day I had downloaded whatever the upgrade is to repair whatever security fixes were needed for the MSN Messenger software. And when I did, they strongly encouraged me by nag screens and what have you to set up a, uh, like their equivalent of a MySpace page. Do you know anyone? who does that on MSN and actually has any response from anybody? When's the last time you searched all the MSN profiles to find a person? Please. So I was so fed up with being nagged into doing this, I was like, okay, uh, just to get them off my back, I'll, I'll write a three-line blog That was enough to get the nag screen off my back. I wrote a three-line blog, and my blog says, Why the hell are you reading this? What does anyone care what I think anyway? And my final question is, is anyone reading this? Period. And honestly, that is how I feel about blogs. I don't care where you went on vacation. I don't care what pets you own. I don't care what parties you get drunk at. I don't care which friends are loyal to you and which friends stabbed you in the back. Your blog is irrelevant to anybody but your very closest friends. And yet there are some people who are delusional enough to think that their thoughts are as important to the world as your average columnist in the New York Times or the Washington Post or USA Today. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Now, the average blog is an, it, it, it's an atrocity. And all it shows is how bad our school system is, how bad we are at spelling and grammar and logical thought. I mean, I'd rather not read blogs just because I don't want to get depressed at how stupid America is. Stupid for writing this incomprehensible, illiterate crap, and stupid even further for reading it. Yikes.
every once in a while, though, somebody writes something interesting. And even then, I hate to use their stuff on the air, because who am I crediting? I'm about to read something on the air, and I don't know the name of the person who wrote it. And having done this job for a long time, I feel kind of creepy about reading the words of a person. I can't even cite their name. I'm going to give you the opinion of a nameless, faceless individual who posted on his blog on the Wall Street Journal website. At least it had the words Wall Street Journal attached to it, which just means it's the same ignorant, illiterate moron who could have written it on his own website, but decided to upload it instead to the WSJ.com website. So here it is. The title of it is Young Single Male. By the way, no writers were used in the crafting of this monologue. Because unlike the morons who do television, we don't need writers. No knock on writers. You guys make a turkey fly every day. Anybody who can put Carson Daly up there doing stand-up comedy, that is a miracle worker. You deserve ten times what you're making now. But here at the Tom Likas show, even writers know we don't need writers here. Not like some of the ignorant morons on television. Can you tell we're starting a new week? I'm getting really excited. Anyway, this blog from the Wall Street Journal, with a name I cannot find, is Young Single Male is Urged to Grow Up. And here it is. People shouldn't dignify the video game playing and hard partying of some 20-something males as a phase of self-discovery, says K.S. Heimowitz. I'd like to ask Jesse Jackson where he thinks she lives, by the way. You know, the, <laughs> you know, the conservative city journal. <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> See, now, if I must knew anything about anything, you finish the sentence yourself, okay? She, suge <laughs> she suggests the so-called young single male grow up before he wrecks society. Men are increasingly delaying marriage to their late 20s and beyond. All right. As seen in movies such as The 40-Year-Old Virgin or Knocked Up, they fill their prolonged bachelorhood by watching gross-out videos on the Internet, playing video games, and flirting from one half-serious girlfriend to another. Damn, I'm 51. That still sounds good. <laughs> Says here, unlike bachelors past... Young single males no longer bother posing as sophisticates. Instead, they indulge in scatological jokes and chugging contests. Sounds like a Tom Likas listener party. You're attacking our business. Says here, partly, this is a backlash against feminism, says Ms. Heimowitz. Addressed to be determined. More fundamentally, pop culture has given the seal of approval to the long-running discomfort men have long felt for the responsibilities of family life. Yeah, so? Says here, articles in Playboy were describing marriage as an encumbrance long before modern feminism arrived. That's why Playboy is still doing land office business, by the way. Because Hugh Hefter was right in the 50s, and he's right today. Says here, the downside to this attitude shows up in novels like Nick Hornby's About a Boy and Benjamin Kunkel's Indecision. In these stories, the protagonist's serial indulgence of easy pleasures leaves them isolated from others with few aspirations. 
I can't say you could generalize like that. I aspire to have as many real estate properties as I can own. So I can indulge in my beer chugging contest with my friends uh, here, there, and everywhere. By the way, I'm about to close on the compound up north, in case you're wondering. To continue living my empty life, isolated from others, and enjoying easy pleasures. (laughs) Boy, that's terrible, having easy pleasures, huh? That's awful. That's awful. Says here for Ms. Heimowitz. Let, let's, uh, what's the area code for the town she lives in, Gary? <laughs> Not sure. Why don't we uh, call her up and get her on the air one of these days? Let's get her in here. <laughs> I don't know if they have plane tickets from there, but let's get her to fly in. Um, <clears throat> for Ms. Heimowitz who has written extensively and sometimes critically about how the family has changed over the past 30 years. Young men just don't want to be married to somebody named Kay Heimowitz and then have to answer to Kay Heimowitz. Will undoubtedly crack the whip over you for enjoying those easy pleasures. And you're not getting any easy pleasures from Kay Heimowitz, I'll tell you right now. Any pleasure will have to be earned over a lengthy period of time. Her name just sounds like too much work. You know what I'm saying? I don't know anything about what she looks like or ethnicity or where she lives. I know nothing about her. All I know is if your name is Kay Heimowitz, she's wearing the pants in that family. I'm telling you right now, writing articles like this. Oof. Yes, she says young men especially, quote, need a culture that can help them define worthy aspirations. She says adults don't emerge, they are made. Now let me just say this about that. You do not have to live up to anyone's standards to be an adult. I think there are certain responsibilities in being an adult that we should all aspire to. Here are the responsibilities I believe define an adult. One... Uh, That you are self-reliant. Okay, you're not living with mommy and daddy, enjoying your extended teenage years. You uh, have a job that you show up at on a regular basis. Uh, You pay your rent and other bills on time. And you build your own wealth knowing that the more wealth you have the more women you will get the more women you get the more women you can then dump the more sexual experiences you can have and the less commitments you make the more wealth you will keep for yourself and the less wealth women will filch from you I do not believe that being a responsible adult means having to plan your Disney cruise every year with your family of five or having to uh, save money for someone else's college education or having to, uh, you know, pay to buy some home in some broken down suburb somewhere where you have to live your pathetic existence. How many of you are driving that home right now? You know the one I'm talking about, that tract home, the only one you could afford, so you had to move two, two and a half hours outside of the center of the city where all the fun stuff is happening. How many of you out there became adults like Kay Heimowitz would like to see? Heimowitz? Whatever. How many of you are out there tonight having dinner at the Macaroni Grill? Right? Or the Red Lobster? Yes, yes, Dean has to throw Olive Garden in there. He wanted to get the Italian vote in. The Olive Garden. How many of you have to take the children to Chuck E. Cheese? You see, these are the things that women think make for an adult. This particular person, Kay Imowitz, as being quoted in this blog, uh, this is what she believes is adult. That The fact that guys like to sit around, for example, how many of you sat around all the, over the weekend and watched four NFL playoff games? Yes, I did too, yes. 
How many of you got in a hot tub? How many of you have a stripper pole in your home? Oh, that's me. Sorry. How many of you? Probably many of you. How many of you were playing Xbox over the weekend? How many of you were, uh, you know, out boozing it up or doing some vodka and energy drinks or whatever and having a blast? Is there something wrong with this? Is there a time limit on how long you can have fun and why? Why do people think that there is some time limit and you have to quote unquote grow up? Why do you have to do that? The only growing up you have to do is to make sure you have a job and an apartment and you pay your own bills. And that if you're really smart, maybe what you'll do is you'll save up and buy yourself a condo or a small house with minimal maintenance where you can house your, you know, 105-inch television screen, your big plasma screen, or where you can house your pinball machine or where you can house your air hockey device or whatever. You know, maybe maybe those are your aspirations. Is there a problem with this? Tom. 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 Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. This is my Sunday theory. It's delicious as soon as you get it. Leave it out in the sun for a few hours and see if you still want to eat it, because that's what happens to a hot chick over time, okay? It becomes a big mess, okay? It gets all over you, it's in your hair, it's a mess, it's on your clothes, and you don't know what to do about it anymore, you know? Just throw everything away, just don't do it. Just break it. If you have a girlfriend that you feel like you love her so much, dump her. Dump her today. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Is there a time when men need to grow up? Is there such a thing? Why do women say this? You know why women say this? By growing up, they mean marry them and pay all their bills. That's what they're saying. Well, they don't exactly say it, but that's exactly what they mean. Yeah. Grow up. Stop playing video games. Stop hanging out with your buddies and chugging beer because it's time to knock me up and pay my bills. I mean, really, is there some need for men to grow up and quote unquote take responsibility beyond their own well-being, like having an apartment, having a condo, paying their own bills, showing up at their job on time? Do we have any other responsibilities as men? I don't think we do. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Russ on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing today? I'm okay, Russ. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I'll just call and say that uh, I think this chick needs to get a hobby instead of blaming everything on the guy. But she probably got dumped because he doesn't want to put up with her garbage. So she decides to blog on something that she thinks guys will actually care about, such as the Wall Street Journal, because, she, you know, no other woman's reading that. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, and the, there are women reading it, but they're all the women of the Power 50 who all look like hogs. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you got Oprah on there. That's probably about but the, obviously no hot chick that's going to have a man that can actually do anything with them. Uh, that, that's absolutely true. Now, do you feel any responsibility? Are you married? Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, you know what? I don't consider myself married or to really have a girlfriend. I have a chick that kind of mooches off me from time to time, but that's about it. Why do you let her do that? Because uh, she's uh, L.A. 9 and Hispanic, and she does a lot of stuff for me in turn. So essentially it's a prostitutional relationship. Uh, yeah, sort of. Sort of. You, you pay some of her expenses occasionally, and she comes over being a 9 or a 9.5, and, and you get to see her naked and... She rides you like a pony. Oh, uh, yeah. That's about it. Pay the phone bill so I can call her up and get a booty call out. That's the only bill I pay. Really? Yeah. It's only, I've got her on a $65 a month limit. Wow. So you get to see who she's calling, too. Oh, yeah. All her bills go, all the phone bills go directly to me, and every single thing is either a call or a text directly to me. Do you ever give her a hard time about who she's calling or who she's texting? Oh, no, no, everything is straight to my phone number. She doesn't call anybody else, so I've got it. I've got her. So she can only right. call you? I've never heard of that. Oh no, she she can't call other people. It's just she doesn't. I've checked her phone bill several times. I've called in because I've got her basically hooked up with my line, so she can call me and text me for free, uh, unlimited, and 
I'm the only one she talks to. And I think she called her mom like two or three times. What a deal. Yeah. She doesn't think you're a boy. Bad. She doesn't think you're her boyfriend, does she? Well, of course she does. All right, there we go. <laughs> of course she thinks I'm her boyfriend. She She's already told her mom that I'm a great guy because I'm paying a phone bill. <laughs> but you're banging other chicks? Well, if I can. I'm, I'm a very busy guy. I, I own my own business. I've called him before. And I also go to school at night, so I'm pretty busy. So I just needed her around so that... Uh, so she's a she to you she's a booty call, and to her you're a boyfriend. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, Do you feel any responsibility to, as women love to say, grow up and take responsibility to be more responsible? Do you feel a responsibility to do that? Yeah. You know what? I, I believe I grew up back when I was fifteen and emancipated myself from my mom because I was paying her bills. So you know what? My responsibility is to me. Uh, if I decide that I'm not going to wear a condom and knock out some chick and then I'm not going to push for uh, an abortion, which I would, then, yeah, my responsibility would be to the kid, but not to the mom. She's, she's her own woman. Whatever happened to equal rights and right. you know, equality amongst women. Well, and I you mean, see, that's what the particular woman in question who wrote this piece was talking about. She said that men being the way we are is a reaction against feminism. And in part, not only is that right, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Why wouldn't we react this way against feminism? Well, it's not even against them. I think, uh, you know, letting women do their own I things. say if women want equality, let them pay their own bills. I'll tell you what, uh, sweetheart, pay your own rent. Uh, exactly. You this are I'm, equal. I'm Good luck. Well, I'm with her right now. She even took me out to dinner the other night. So, and I know for a fact I make well more than what she does. Uh huh. <laughs> and she she bought dinner for me the other Perfect. night. Perfect. Because uh, uh, I'm paying her phone bill. Now you realize that's her investment in the future. She's buying you dinner in hopes that you'll marry her. Of course, but I'm not Catholic, and she is, and you know how that's going to work out. Oh, she'll I'm, she'll the, she. That doesn't mean she wouldn't want to marry you. Oh, she probably does right now, you know. Right, and uh, 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 is she on birth control? Uh, I'm not sure if she is. She says that she, uh, she can't get pregnant, but I don't believe in that. So I'm She says it. she can't get pregnant. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, but, you know, I'm, I'm a big Trojans fan, so. Uh, I see. Would, yeah. Well, so you're not a Bruins fan, you're a Trojans fan. That's it. <laughs> Got it. But, uh, yeah, there's there's no way I'm taking any chances with that. I guess if I could, I'd put a spare tire on there and just go nuts. Yeah, if I were you, I would never, ever come close to her without a condom because she wants to have a baby. Write it down. Oh, yeah, no doubt. She's only 22, too. I'm 32. She's yeah, 22. That would lock you right in. Yeah, it would. You know, it's uh, amazing. The number of women who, who can't conceive is so small compared to the number who claim they can't conceive. I, it's... It's remarkable how many women tell this lot. We, well, you know what? Listening to your show for the past three years, I've, I've really found that out, too, you know, because uh, there's like a thousand women that hate what you're saying, but then they're also the ones who say they can't get pregnant, and they have doctors' paperwork and so on. You know what? If my cousin was a doctor, I'd have paperwork saying that, you know, I couldn't do a lot of things as well. Did she show you paperwork? No, she didn't show me. Okay. Paperwork. And what? for what reason did she say she can't get pregnant? Well, some of the ex-boyfriends that she's had in the past uh, have done their business on the inside, and, uh, yeah, she hasn't gotten pregnant or had a kid or an abortion or anything yet, so. Oh, well, then, in other words, no doctor told her she can't get pregnant. She just hasn't, uh, she hasn't lost the Wheel of Fortune yet. Yeah, exactly. Actually, yeah. in your case, lost the Wheel of Fortune. Her case won the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to play roulette, so I'm not going to load the weapon and fire I love it. the logic there, too. People who say, well, since I've never gotten pregnant without using birth control, therefore I can't ever get pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, what does that mean? Don't ask me, man. I, I believe that uh, I can't get pregnant. So You know, if I walk through the worst neighborhood in America, which happens to be the neighborhood where I grew up, it's the South Bronx, zip code 10457. If I walk down the Grand Concourse at 3 a.m., a white individual such as myself... And I survived walking all the way from 170th Street to Fordham Road. If I survived after doing it, you can't assume that if I kept walking the Grand Concourse that I would live. Eventually, someone's going to take me down. 
Well, yeah, it's 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 a uh, you know just a shot in the dark. Literally. Exactly. exactly. Now, I don't believe in playing those games either. So I told her right up front when we first started going out that I'm not playing any games with anybody, and that I'm not taking any chances with anybody. I'm 32, and uh, you know I, I've made my own living since I, I was emancipated from my parents, and there, there's no way that I'm gonna give all of what I've got up just for that. Good points, Russ. Thank you. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You'll be glad to know when I did the DTB email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Talking about a blog on the Wall Street Journal website. Quoting a woman saying that men need to grow up. Stop with the extended childhoods and playing video games and having beer chugging contests. Time to grow up and take responsibility. Is that true? <laughs> Ernesto Perez writes it and says, All that really means is hurry up, I'm getting old. <laughs> Here's another listener who writes it and he says, No signature here. What you're talking about this hour is exactly the lifestyle that I'm aspiring to. Forget some nagging chick in my ear all day, every day. Forget not doing whatever it is that I want. Why do women object to this so much? Women can't be that full of themselves. Well, they can, actually, because they want you to, uh, you know, start becoming more ambitious and responsible and paying their bills. Knocking them up, paying for the kids. That's what they want. They're upset that we have gone on strike. They're upset that the kind of people who listen to a show like this have said, forget it. Not getting married. My babies live in the basement. And they're all 750 milliliters. They're bottles of wine. Yes. The email continues. He says... I DJ, and I graduate from school this June with my degree in electronic engineering. All I want is to be happy in my life. Some nagging bitch bitching about what I'm not doing is not the way that I want to go. In my life, all I've seen in marriage is me, pain and misery. I'm not subscribing to that life. Just to back up what I'm saying, I'm not just talking about my parents. I'm talking about over 10 married couples, maybe more, that I've known. For God's sake, the pastor of my church is even divorced. At that point, I just knew something was wrong. I strongly believe in God, but swear you are the closest thing to God I know. And you make sense. Thank you. Grow up and be a man. What a joke. What woman does not want... I don't understand the last line here. I think he's trying to say, what woman does not want a man who does anything he wants? Well, <laughs> women want us paying for everything. For God's sake, that's what they want. Mike Wright said it says there is a problem with this lifestyle. I have to wait for the weekend to do it. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> he said this lady needs to be kicked in the balls. Yes, the balls. If she is married, she clearly has her husband's nuts. You kick ass, Tom. That's from Mike. And finally, Eddie writes in. He's been doing a little TV viewing. Eddie says, I'm a full-time college student pursuing my master's degree. I have a part-time job where I drive a lot. And, any, and he listens a lot, he's trying to tell me. Anyways, Tom, I just lost a $50 bet with my brother. And for a starving student like myself, that is a whole lot of money. My brother bet me that I couldn't sit through a whole episode of The Real Housewives of Orange County. That's featured on Bravo. I said, what the hell? How bad could that show be? So I attempted to la watch last week's episode, and I can honestly say that I have never been so scared straight in my life. I listen to your show religiously. And the comments you make about gold diggers, especially in Southern California, are right on the mark. It is one thing to hear about gold diggers, but watching them in action is another. It made me so angry watching these gold digging bimbo clones perform that I almost threw my Chipotle burrito at my television set. 
Their daily activities consisted of going to beauty parlors, meeting up with friends for lunch, and attending Botox parties. That's right, Botox parties! All of the women on the show have had multiple marriages and divorces, which further demonstrates your accuracy with the failure of marriages amongst wealthy men. The husbands on the show appear to have lucrative careers, while their green-sucking vampire prostitute wives prance around South Orange County, spending their husbands' money. They do this while having arrogant attitudes as if they are the successful ones. Oh, wait, the housewives on the show are real estate agents. They are not lethargic, green-thirsty vampires. They are lethargic, green-thirsty vampires with BS career titles. As a devout listener to your show, I believe it is my duty to offer this advice to your male listeners, especially those who are wealthy or plan on becoming wealthy someday. I know it is a tough task, but please... Try to watch part of, or if you have the courage, an entire episode of The Real Housewives of Orange County. The men on the show could one day be you. You could be 40 years old and stuck in a pro-woman legal agreement called marriage with a fake glorified prostitute wife, where you will not only be supporting her and her lavish spending habits, but her children's as well. As a matter of fact, one of the women on the show became a mother at age 19. And here, 22 years later, her dirtbag son is still living at home. He is not even in school. And he has a BS $9 an hour job at a car dealership where his stepdad is stuck supporting him as well. I call this the like is scared straight lesson. And if your listeners have not yet been convinced of gold diggers in their ways, this show will surely scare them straight. That's from Eddie. This all started with a blog in the Wall Street Journal quoting a woman saying that it's time for men to grow up and assume more responsibility. Stop. Stop playing video games and beer chugging. Stop hanging out with your friends. It's time to get married and be responsible. Is there any truth in that? Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Well, I must say that last, uh, that last writer crafted that just right on the head, didn't he? Oh, yes. Now, now keep in mind, though, that they use the term grow up, which, of course, is hypocrisy. I mean, what woman, of course, has grown up when all she cares about is being style-based versus substance-based? All she does is shop for this and shop for Or that. when she needs daddy to pay for everything. Right. But one of the things is that they might be hiding behind the term growing up when really they're scared. They're really scared. And you know what they're scared of? For every day that I wait and I don't marry her... She gets closer and closer to her expiration date. That's right. For every day that I wait, that decreases the chances that she'll ever get married at all. And it increases the chances that you will get something younger and hotter because the older you get, the more money you make. And the uh, more wisdom you will acquire. E exactly. Now, let's propose something, though, however. Let's propose that Kay Schlimmel Schlimmel, let's propose that this lady is reasonably attractive. What she's doing is she's scared. She's scared because if he doesn't make the move now, he's not going to make it when she loses that uh, that little frame of hers or that attractive look that she has. Yeah, that's true. Now, she could be attractive, and she's just scared to death because time is running out because the shopping days of Christmas are... Women are like BMWs, you know? I mean, you, you'd love to own a brand new BMW, but if you lease one, nobody knows the difference. And after you've put some mileage on it and driven over some speed bumps, just turn it back into the dealer and get a new model. Right, and if you were a car salesman, wouldn't you want to try to move those cars as quickly as possible before they get too old? That's right. So maybe it's nothing to do with growing up. They're just paranoid that no one's really going to ask them to the Well, the office. thing is, they've tried to turn it and turn the tables here, because the ones who don't grow up are women. Women who think men should pay their bills. You know what? Adults pay their own bills. They pay their own rent. They take care of their own responsibilities. Right. It, and it just it amazes me when someone, people who are so, again, style-based versus substance-based are accusing us of not growing up. Can You're you right. Me out tribal style, please? African tribal style. Of course I can. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. 
Okay, well, first of all, I'm just going to say I'm not even going to attempt to argue with you because as much as I hate to admit it, you are right most of the time. But as far as the whatever you're just reading about the housewives, um, there's three chicks on there that make the money in the family. Who are they? Yeah, the girl Gina, she's a real estate chick. Oh, the real wait, 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 wait. The real estate chick whose husband or soon to be ex husband was a major league baseball player? Right, but she makes the money nowadays and then there's Vicky. Nowadays, but how many how many millions did he make when he was playing baseball? Well, who knows? But what about Vicky who sells insurance that has five offices throughout the country? Uh yeah, but again, uh when you have women like that generally uh, the husbands are losers, or the women are just not that attractive. Or maybe they're getting a little uh, long in the tooth. Mm, well, I, kinda, I mean, okay. Fine. Some of the women on that show are not all that. I have seen I have seen the Real Housewives of Orange County, and not, these are not all bathing beauties. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm, I don't know. I, from when I tuned in, you were reading an email, I guess, or something. So I don't know what the whole point of it was. All I heard was that, you know, these chicks are using these guys for money, which is maybe not quite the hundred percent truth, you know? Uh, again, uh, I would say that somebody who is a real estate agent after her husband has had a lengthy career in major league baseball, uh, you know, maybe she's making money today. Well, the fact is he made millions and the reason she lives in Coto de Casa in Orange County is because he was working as a ball player, not because she was a real estate agent. What about Vicky? The insurance one. Again, I, I, I don't know the whole history of all of these people, but I do know about the, about, um, uh, Matt Keogh, the former ball player. Okay. Well, since you don't know the history, why do you bring it up then? I'm not a, I'm not, again, I, I didn't, first of all, I didn't bring up this show. I read an email from somebody who has seen the show regularly, and I've watched it once or maybe one and a half times, okay? You say he was, like, forced to watch it in part of a bet, first of all, and second of all... That's what he said. Him? You agree with him? I don't know. He, I, I can only take him at his word. But are we going to sit here and argue about whether his friend bet him that he couldn't watch the whole episode? Now you're wasting my time. Jennifer on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. This is going to be painful. Yes. Hello. Tom. Yes. This is my name's Jennifer. I know. I just said that, but you weren't listening. I didn't hear you. Oh, well, that's because you weren't listening. No, I was listening. You were on speakerphone because I was on hold for twenty. What did What did Dean tell you about the speakerphone? <laughs> I'm sorry. What did Dean tell you about the speakerphone? Didn't tell me a thing. Yeah, he did. And he always does. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, I told you it was going to be painful. <laughs> yeah. If you knew what I've been through the last six months, you probably wouldn't say that. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. Well, what are you talking about? Why don't you enlighten this blonde? Well, actually, I was doing a radio show. I pretty much explained it all had you been listening. The Tom Likas Show.